We are recording. Let me just pop, 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 pop. Yep. All right. Pop. Thanks. Searchable as reptiles. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, what he did is, is true. It's, oh, yeah. He's, he's trying to be a dick, but he's actually being helpful. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Your helpful neighborhood dick. <laughs> Who gave you that title? I don't know. Well, you just now. <laughs> Are we all in the frame? That's good. I mean, not, not that we need to be. It's not that important. <laughs> where are you seeing it? I can see a reflection behind there, but I don't see where I'm in frame. Mm. You're blocked. I can yeah. see it. You're not, allowed, <laughs> you're not allowed to see yourself in right here. <laughs> it never works out well if we let you see yourself in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever works out well when I'm on camera. I wish I knew what was going on with this blend because this is the best nose I've had on anything tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you can start blending your own whiskey now, Cusco. I mean, if I could know exactly, there was like just a smidgen of one and a smidgen of the other, a little more of the last. And then, but, but you covered up all the labels before you mixed them in. <laughs> no, they were all just sitting in the glasses that were uh, moved over to the counter. So I have no idea. But I do know what whiskeys were involved in. I just got to get the percentages right. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, everybody, welcome back to Searchable as Reptiles. I'm one of your, I guess we're hosts. Is that what we are? I'm Garrett Hartle. I'm Brian Cusco. And uh, this week we're actually location uh, sponsored. Location, yeah, that's yeah. correct. Location sponsored by uh, Blake Stewart from Stewart Design. How's it going, Blake? It's going well. Thanks for having us down here in sunny, no, snowy West snowy. Virginia, West, <laughs> Western <laughs> Western Virginia. West oh, God. <laughs> Cringe. We just came off of a, a whiskey wimps episode. We've still got the the glasses half full or half empty, as it as it were. So you guys ought to go check that episode out with uh, Blake and myself over on Brian and Matt's Whiskey Tasting Channel. And and then we, we tested four different kinds of whiskeys, and Brian just mixed them all into his glass. So that's disgusting. And I'm sticking with the Eagle Rare, right. even after the blind test. I was still and best. I'm back to water. <laughs> It yeah, is. It's, it's been a long night with a whiskey tasting. <laughs> yeah, we, we've run through some whiskey tonight. There's no doubt about it. This is mostly Eagle Rare, though. I definitely took the rest of that <laughs> sample bottle and dumped it in there. <laughs> get those buttery caramel notes. Yeah. Well, Blake, when did you first get a snake? Ooh, the first snake that I got was the Leucistic Texas Rat Snake. And he said Leucistic. Nice. Is he your Dude, best friend now? Isn't that how you're meant to say it? Yes, that is yes, how you're meant to say it. Most it people really, in the industry say it. Most people say, most people say uh, West yeah, Virginia, yeah, yeah. but Lucistic. the idiots say Western Virginia. So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got it, yeah. <laughs> no, so I, I got her about uh, probably four years ago. So four to five years ago. Yeah, okay. Like that. Time flies when you're having fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, so what got you your first, like what, what led to you getting your first snake at you know, four years ago. Oh, well, um, I mean, I've, I've always liked all kinds of animals. I've always had all kinds of animals. Um, I've never had snakes before because my dad is totally terrified of them. So, you know, as a kid, I used to... Forbidden fruit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a kid, I used to go out in the woods and, you know, catch them all the time and scare the shit out of them. And, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but I was never allowed to have one as a pet. So, um, no, uh, eventually I just, you know, ended up getting one, uh, enjoyed it and that kind of led me to others it's funny because you still act that way with them today i'm always amazed i've been down here several times for poker night or whatever and you always got your buddies that are terrified of them you bring a big snake out and walk up behind them and let it lick their back of their ears and see them run outside like brawn yeah Yeah, exactly (laughs) exactly yeah for me on the other hand like it was my mom that was terrified of snakes and she just oh. drilled it into me from an early age. Like, you should never, never traumatize someone with a snake, especially if you want more people to like snakes. <laughs> so, yeah. That is some solid logic there. <laughs> <laughs> She's a pretty good mom. <laughs> well, I think it's cool how... One of, one of the things I always talk about is how the reptile industry and hobby is just like a little slice of the entire world population. Like, we've mm-hmm. got... Every walk of life, from lawyers to political figures to criminals and drug dealers, 
like, and everything in between, right? And I think that's newer, because it used to be all the criminals and drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few tattoo artists and piercing specialists mixed in there, but, yeah. All right, all right. Fair yeah. enough. But, no, but you're right. It's it's totally changed. So. Okay. Um or maybe you just didn't know about them before. But maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, you, you, were, you were definitely in the more. I've been in the yeah, industry you were, longer you were in the industry for sure. Yeah, you were in the, at the shop, at the pet shops. And the it was shops definitely, I, I was always the normal one, if you can imagine that. Like, wow, you're, <laughs> you have reptiles and you're so normal. I was like, well, give <laughs> my, me a chance. But my, my point in recognizing that is that I think it's awesome that there's always people that can bring their own skill sets to be benefactors of the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, which you've done with your design stuff, with your logo design and doing these rebranding now. For, I mean, you've rebranded, obviously, Justin to Canova, which was a, a big move. I mean, Justin is quite a well-known name in the hobby, and JK, JK Rep, or Jacob Boca Reptiles, and then that whole move to Canova, you had a big part in that. And then even more so, in, in my eyes, the, the rebrand in the U.S. arc to make it... Um, That's going to be your biggest legacy because, you know... Any one of us, whether it's, uh, you know, Justin Kabilka or, or anyone that has a brand and we're trying to, you know, either expand our market or get a bigger piece of the market or have people recognize us, that's great for our business. But the, the rebrand for US Arc is reaching out to, you know, a, 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 a crowd that potentially is deciding our futures. <laughs> sure. So that's a huge thing. That's pretty cool. I, I was pretty stoked for you when I heard that you got that. No, I was excited about working on that project and, um, you know, still working with them. Um, no, it's, I mean, yeah, my, my business, the, uh, you know, Stuart design, my design company, um, you know, we've, I mean, I've been at it for over 15 years now. Most of what we do is always been kind of more of the, more of the corporate stuff. Um, you know, I've said it before, but we work with a lot of like, a lot of law firms, a lot of, you know, construction companies, a lot of companies in the medical industry, chiropractors, dentists, things like that. Uh, but, you know, it's, we're at a point now where, you know, I, I also, I mean, I really want to work on stuff I enjoy working on. And uh, like I said, I've always been into animals. I, I've really, you know, got into the reptiles, you know, over the last number of years. And so it's, it's great to work with people in that industry. I, I enjoy working on the projects more. I mean, I enjoy being able to travel to the, the shows, uh, you know, Pomona the other week, the guys, uh, any RBC shows and everything like that. Um, it's a, it's a great community and stuff. I like all the people, you know, that I've, I've met, worked with. So I'm really into those projects a lot more than when I have to travel to, you know, lawyer convention. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 I can't yeah. imagine why that wouldn't be more enjoyable. Than yes, that. yes, exactly. So, reptile party. <laughs> so, so, so I enjoy it. And, um, no, I mean, working with us arc, I mean, if I'm able to help, contribute to the industry of course that was all done pro bono with everything with them and um you know i'm happy to do so if i can help make an impact and you know improve what they do for the community then then great yeah <laughs> it's overdue because like if you compare the old us arc logo to the new one like just on face impressions you know sure. what i mean the old one to me looks like either graffiti or a tattoo like we're talking about the alternative culture with and there's nothing wrong with like that culture, those people nope. in any way, shape, or form. Not at all. But if you're presenting yourself b before the U.S. Senate and you want to be taken seriously, you know what I mean? And then you, you kind of got to cater to that. So you look at the new one now, and it looks like some kind of a, a government agency. Ooh. Nice catch. Or, or nice <laughs> luck. Like, yeah. <laughs> nice, almost, yeah. Almost made it look like I peed my pants. But yeah. No, no, exactly. I mean, that's, you know, when I, when I first talked to Phil about it, I mean, that was... You know, that, that was my whole thoughts on it was the the previous logo that they'd had for so long. I mean, obviously a lot of people, were, you know, were familiar with it and liked it, but it doesn't matter if it appeals to people in the reptile industry. You know, it needs to appeal to and be taken seriously by, you know, legislators and things like that that Phil's yeah, working with. 100%. And, you know, he even said, he's like, you know, one of the things he mentioned to me, he's like, look, you know, I'm actually embarrassed to hand out my card because I give it to someone and they see this like graffiti looking thing on there. And it's, you know, then I want them to take me seriously. And, and he's like, you know, it's kind of contradicting and so forth. Uh, he was telling me that like about a week before or so, he was kind of doing the decision or, or maybe he had already made a decision to move forward with rebranding with you, but he was at the bank and he had on the US Arc logo, the old logo on his shirt and the lady, the teller was like, 
What's that say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, the, the old one was was hard to read. I mean, people that knew what U.S. Arc was obviously, you know, knew about it. But for those that weren't familiar with U.S. Arc, they, I mean, a lot of people, you know, thought it was an O or a D. You know, that, that started it. It was it was very detailed. I mean, it had all kinds of gradients to it. The the colors weren't even correct. The red was more of a maroon uh, whenever it was shown. The blue was more of a purple. Uh, so. I mean, there, there were a lot of things, you know, uh, we, I mean, we fixed uh, the legibility issues. We fixed the, you know, the more, again, professional um, corporate kind of look that U.S. Arc should have as opposed to the playful graffiti look that it had before. Yeah. yeah. I like that you took it in kind of a patriotic inner direction as well, too, because I don't know, that's that's kind of the whole thing is one of the big things with them is fighting for you know, freedoms for people to, I don't know. Keep I, themselves? Yeah, well, I just, I get so, so tired of just like, you know, I don't know what, what I do for a living or with reptiles or with my family, even, even outside of like reach out reptiles, but just uh, enjoying reptiles or, or the keeping or the breeding of them. I, I just, from my perspective, I'm like, why, why would anybody want to attack that hobby or that way of life or you know you're just you're you're being passionate about uh nature and the the natural world around you and animals like that and stuff so i get i get so tired of having to fight just to do things the way i i'm one of those people that have always been into reptiles ever since i was born you know we're over at your buddy's Mm -hmm. bronze house we were talking about that and so now all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, all I've ever tried to do is make the world a little bit better place wherever I'm at. I've done a lot of educating about reptiles. You know, I've, uh, done, you know, contributed in a lot of different ways to the scientific rep- the community, the, you know, I don't know, all of it, even with uh, doing like rattlesnake relocations to save the in- individual animals and stuff whenever I lived out in California and all those things. You know, that, that was just my whole life and lifestyle. I mean, one of the big things I campaigned for where we're up in Pittsburgh area is that everyone thinks every snake that they see is a is a copperhead. You probably get the same thing. Same here. Yeah. Kill it first and then ask if it's copperhead. And I've yet to see someone mm-hmm. actually find a copperhead. Sure. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, you know, me and my kids, we go down to, we call it Snake Island, this little pond by our house, and we catch water snakes by the bucket loads and take lots of pictures and put them all over the internet so when everyone freaks out your kids are holding a bunch of copperheads you found a nest and i was like you don't know what you're talking about you know and educate it and have fun so anyway so i don't know I, I get so disappointed that you know people got to come for people all the time in society today like I, you're different than me i'm coming for you yeah. it's like so a perspective i've seen brought up recently especially with you know the the competes act that's been brought and, and made it through Congress and it's on its way to the Senate as we record this. Made it, yeah, made it through yeah, the made House. It, made it to the House, sorry, and, and is going through to the Senate right now. Um, you know, something, when I first came back into the hobby, so I'm, I'm with you, obviously. I, I've been keeping a snake. I got my first pet snake when I was four. It's been a huge part of my life growing up. You know, I had that 10-year hiatus, whatever, in the island and then came back and basically jumped right in right as U.S. Arc was in the middle of their lawsuit for the, the Lacey Act, one, the original yeah. one that they ended up winning. And... Um, something that i've heard also you talk about where it's like not the first time like there's constantly somebody coming and gunning for the reptile hobby legislatively Mm. and um, that same sentiment i've seen brought back up again with this thing where it's like this is uh, although there has been i think acknowledgement that this is a big one where this uh, this one might actually have a real big effect and but there's been that sentiment as well that there's it's a sky is falling and the sky has always been falling I guess so. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I get people that panic all the time, you know, whenever anyone, I, I don't know if it's like a ignorance is bliss thing or whatever, but the, the language that is in this bill, you know, for, so for those listeners who may not know what we're talking about, there's a, an act that's trying to be passed through Congress right now that is the Competes Act, and there's about four pages in there. Of, of of complete of a multi-thousand page bill. Spe- yeah, uh, special interest group uh, copy and paste text that they've been trying to put in every other bill that goes through the Senate, and this is uh, it's completely unrelated to what the bill is about. The bill is supposed to be about building back up the American economy after COVID. The last bill that it was in was a COVID relief bill. Like, hey, remember we all got like 600 bucks checking mail kind of thing because of COVID or whatever? 
uh, it was in there too. And usually they trim all the fat and they're like, meh, 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 and they, they chop a lot of this stuff out. But a lot of those things actually pass. And it's a, a waste of government money. You know, if you think about, like, for example, the, the COVID relief bill, um, I saw some stats on this and, and it was basically, it was something like we each got about 600 bucks out of it. But the bill, the cost of the bill was enough to give every American man, woman, and child $6,000. So where is my 5,400 bucks and your 5,400 bucks? And it goes to these crazy special interest group things that go in there. I mean, it goes other places too, but, um, but the, the worst, the dirtiest, the most sinful part of it is where people splice these little secret agendas in there for their buddy or whatever. And there's special interest groups that have been pushing for, you know, Animals should not be allowed to interact with people because it's always bad for animals, you know, and that, and it's unfortunate. And they, you know, like, I don't know, I don't like the way that they approach the situation or even the conversation. Uh, I'm all for animal welfare. You're the same way, Blake, you know, big time. And we live our lives around that, but I'd rather educate and encourage people to do better, you know, than to try to sneak something in the back door and, you know, I mean, this is a, you were talking about the original U.S. art battle to uh, say that the, the Lacey Act doesn't have any jurisdiction over interstate travel, you know what I mean? To kind of save that large segment of, of the industry. Um, you know, that went all the way to the Supreme Court and it was U.S. art against U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and, and we won on that battle. So for a grassroots organization and a, a small industry like the reptile hobby to go against the United States government and win is huge. And then for that to all be basically taken away. Yeah. Because they snuck something in and no one was paying attention. So anyway, the, the only reason why I bring all that stuff up is that, uh, the Senate is going to vote. Everybody has a representative, whatever state of the United States you live in, you have a Senator, you can look them up. And when they go in to vote, they, they try to educate themselves on these bills. And the only way that they hear from like kind of a, the, the whole breadth of the background of their contingency or the people who voted for them to represent them is by hearing from those people. So call them, email them, send in and say, listen, you need to take out these four pages. It's a special interest thing that, you know, like from my perspective, Reach Out Reptiles from the beginning of COVID to now has grown exponentially. We literally, like most of my staff, I was able to hire because they had lost their job because of COVID, you know, and meanwhile, you know, everything was outsourced overseas and stuff. We're, we're an American company, you know what I'm saying? That's growing up out of that. We participate in the local community. We are, we are literally everything that this act is, is passing is to try to build and help businesses like ours, small businesses like Reach Out Reptiles. But because they put this little special interest thing in there, you know, they're, they're trying to it could destroy up. everything. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. So, so I'm actually, you know, for those listening or whatever, I, I'm confident that it won't go through, but if it does, it would be, you know, potentially very detrimental. And, and the only way that our senators are going to be able to actually represent us on the day that it comes to voting is if they're educated about it. And the only way they're going to be educated is if we go to them in the same way that I post pictures with my kids and water snakes on local Facebook community groups and tell them, hey, don't kill these, they're not copperheads. You know what I mean? Is go to this, these senators, they're, many of them, most of them, probably all of them, are just as ignorant about reptiles as the people going, that's a copperhead, you should kill it, you know what I mean? Um, and if we don't educate them, they will be voting on these things in ignorance and they can, they can pass the act and strike that language from it, yep. which is usually what happens. And US Arc makes it very easy to find. There's always links there to find your local, or like who your Senator is and gives example emails of what to send out and what to say, how to present your information to make it very easy. If it seems like something that is daunting a task. Yeah. You just go to usark.org and they've got the links. It's all, it's the main one on there. It's very easy. And Brian also put together, uh, 
tutorial video oh, yeah. for people as well. <laughs> did you? Where was that at? It was a live thing? stream, man. Oh, okay. I did it live just like your show. It's literally this easy. Like I'm sitting here doing yeah. it live, trying to run a live stream and scroll through and be like, just click yeah. here, type this. There yeah. We basically took our staff yesterday. We have our little Monday morning meetings. And I was like, everyone's going to write the senator. And I said, I want you all to write a letter from your unique perspective. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and US ARC makes it super easy because you can literally go to their website, you can copy and paste, you know, the verbiage, what you need to say, you can then customize it yourself if you want and so forth and send it out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of people, you know, on social media in the reptile industry, you know, putting this out there, this information, telling people, hey, look, you know, you need to do something about this. This is a, this is a big deal. You know, don't, don't just sit by and, you know, let it happen or anything like that. Um, we're better it's, it's, at telling each other to do stuff. It's time for, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's time for people <laughs> to actually stand up and, and do something about it. You know, I mean, if you haven't, you, you need to. You need to go to usarc.org. You need to, you know. Because I mentioned, as I mentioned on the live stream, the government is there to do our will as much mm -hmm. as it sometimes seems not that way or we like to get in our skin that that's not the case. That is what the government is there for. And they need to hear our people. voices to do that. And if they don't hear them, then they yeah. don't know what our because will is. Because it's no, other no, voices. Exactly. They're, they're hearing other voices, and right. very vocal voices constantly in their ear. Murmur, 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 yeah, murmur. Exactly. I mean, start, I mean who, whoever's in their, their ear the most is, is who they're going to listen to. Right. Well, it was <laughs> actually it was like Adolf Hitler that was talking about, you know, if you take a lie and you spread it loud enough and enough times, people will start to believe it. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically it. If every bill is being included with this kind of language about how evil they are, then we need to become known to our senators so that you can say what you want, but you know what I mean? I met Garrett and I've seen his thing and I, it's not like that, you know? So I don't know. That's yeah. you got to get their ear and do that stuff. But I don't know. I feel like that's the obligatory conversation to have tonight because it's what's facing our whole industry and it's, it's a shame that it would even have to be facing it because it is special interest fluff and that's like the biggest thing that's you know just eating away at our country is you know people just putting these little stupid things in there all the time i'm gonna start writing my own stupid yeah. things and put them in. i mean it's not just it's not just the reptile industry either that it will affect if this goes through it's, oh no it's, it's every yeah yeah i mean it's all it's all kinds of animals and pets yeah. well, i mean it's well, everything the, the problem like you know people talk about like the blacklist and whitelist approach to listing things. So a blacklist approach is like, hey, I'm gonna list these things that are bad. And if something else becomes bad, we'll put that on the list too. That's, that's bad. But this is a whitelist approach, meaning you're allowed to have a dog, a cat, a gerbil, a parakeet. And you know what I'm saying? Farm animals. Yeah, and maybe koi, because all fish are inherently evil if you have a fish. You know, that's, that's a big thing with the animal rights groups is no fish anymore, you know? So they're gonna whitelist it. Here's, yeah, and here's all your domesticated animals. And that's that. Everything else is not okay. Which, it's hard to even imagine. Like, no country in history ever has done anything like that. And it's like, why would America even be entertaining that? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're supposed to have a very different country than that. Here's the approved list of five different animals that's okay to have. You know, that's so stupid. You know, and why would those animals even be okay? Like, a lot of it is like, you know, they're trying to solve. They're trying to solve even these special interest groups that I hate their tactics. They have good motives. You know, you're trying to stop things like animal abuse and things like that. Yeah, absolutely, that animal abuse is horrible. You don't want to do that kind of stuff. And if we can continue to evolve as an industry, that's great. But what does allowing people to keep dogs and cats have to do with animal abuse? You ever see an abused dog or a cat? I know I have. Of course. <laughs> They're yeah. not immune. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So stop banning everybody and teach people how to use their heads and think with common sense and be compassionate. And that's where you're really going to you know, change things. Yeah, just let Google think for me, dude. I just... What do I say here? How do I talk to this person? <laughs> hey Siri, what pet should I get? <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> I want a schmeagle de doo. <laughs> one shoe that's red and one shoe that's blue. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Uh, I well, can't. So Blake got your you got your first snake four years ago. And now you have how many snakes? Do you even know? I have 22. 
22 snakes four years later. So serial collector, <laughs> new to the industry, already rebranding US Arc, which is probably one of the more important organizations. Yeah, to no, exist. I'd say that uh, you know, if you base statistically new hobbyists and snake reptile keepers, you're actually on the slow route to getting snakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, he has some pretty choice snakes. They're yeah, heavier yeah. hitting it's, it's snakes. Not, you know, a lot of times it's like I got one snake, Ooh. then I got two, and then I had ten within a year. <laughs> it's, you're, you're more on the slow, the slower route, I'd say. Then, yeah. yeah. And, and, and to Gary's point, and to my point too, is like to have just kind of come into the hobby and industry and done something as major as Rebrand US Arc, which in our eyes is major. That's a, oh, big, huge. It's a big yeah, deal. That, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, yeah, I think it's very cool. I, I, I wish that more people who had these different skill sets come into the hobby and, and apply them into the hobby in the way that you have. That would be really cool. Um, well, I, I was going to take the approach of instead of us continually telling Blake how cool he is, I was going to ask you what you think is cool coming into the hobby, you know, because <laughs> you entered four years ago as what, 2018? Sure. Right, you're in, let's say you're entering the reptile scene, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been here since, I mean, really kind of participating since the '90s, right? Mm -hmm. um, loved reptiles before that, but was never any part of the industry whatsoever. So it really in like mid '90s is when I started. So I have a very different perspective. So coming in 2018, you go to a lot of reptile shows. You now travel and have fun with that. You have a a, a very eclectic collection of multiple different species. Um, you even bought your wife a couple of lizards, some crested geckos. And well, stuff. she is a, she is a crested gecko. Yeah, she picked that out from the uh, Schaumburg show. Yeah, so year. so it's so, great. So it's, it's starting to yeah, diversify yeah. quite a bit. So what is it that you like about not just the animals? I mean, the animals are great. Everybody loves animals. But what do you like about the industry? Sure. I mean, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, I've always liked animals. I've always had animals in my life. Um, I mean, as a, as a kid, you know, I. Uh, raised and bred sugar gliders. So, oh, yeah. um, uh, you know, I had a uh, pet ferret. <laughs> um, and then later I got into uh, birds. You know, I had a couple African greys, uh, umbrella cockatoo, Moluccan cockatoo, and uh, scarlet macaw. And um, the, the birds were great. Um, I, I ended up after... Uh, my kids uh, paying to put the birds in a sanctuary down in Florida in Pensacola, um, just because birds are a lot more work than than snakes. You, know, you have to give them well, constant, birds, constant attention. You're not talking attention. about finches and yeah, no, I'm not talking, talking about you know little budgies, children. parakeets, or whatever and stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. These these birds are, are just like kids, and and they do require a lot of attention. And if you can't give them constant attention all day every day, then you know, I mean, they they, they get depressed. They'll start plucking their feathers and things like that. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to see them like that or anything. So, you know, like I said, I paid to put them in a, a sanctuary where they can have tons of room, fly around, be with all their own kind, things like that. You know, I go down there, visit them from time to time and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, and then I ended up you know, getting into the reptiles. What, what I really like about the reptile community is I, I've never, I guess I've, I've never experienced a, a community like that with any of the other animals, you know, uh, mm. I, I don't think there is, I mean, you know, having the birds, there weren't any, you know, unless I'm just oblivious to them, there were no conventions for, <laughs> for parrots, you know, for hook bull birds or anything like that. They could travel around and, uh, you know, hang out with and, you know, interact with all these, you know, people that you know, had similar animals and stuff like that. Um, so, so I, I do, like I said, enjoy the community and enjoy the people. I enjoy traveling all the shows seeing the animals it's, it's 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 fun you know i like it yeah that was pretty cool one one thing that um i know i've done a couple of videos with you on our reach out reptiles channel or whatever but the the way you keep them is pretty fun like you don't uh seem to be the type to go halfway so like our last video i think it was our last video with you on the channel was the addition that you put on your house to <laughs> yeah. make a giant it's like a snake gym. Those of you guys that are watching can see uh, Blake probably enjoys the gym a little bit better than I do. Um, and so like when I build out a snake thing, it's like, oh, let's make this like the jungle or let's make this. And he's like, let's make this like like a gym. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which it really is, is kind of the purpose of it, right? Get the animals out and Exercise. active. And, yeah. yeah, muscle tone. Yeah, yeah, build all that stuff. That's what they're kind of lacking for in most people. I mean, same thing with all the pets I had. You know, when I had sugar gliders, I'd, I'd set things up for them to, you know, 
climb around, climb up, jump across the room, you know, explore and stuff, you know, the, the fair free room, the house. Actually, uh, that it does was, remind me a lot, like the waiting room setup does remind me a lot of like the sugar glider hospital. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Like, the Indonesian <laughs> yeah, people yeah. set up. I've seen in the, the Indonesian yeah, shows, yeah. there's always a sugar glider <laughs> section. They got all these, you know, office schools and ropes yeah, around. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. It reminds me a lot of that on, on steroids. Kind yeah. Of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, the, like I was saying, the, the fair I had, you know, free room in the house, it was litter trained and everything, you know, so, so that was easy. The, um, the birds, uh, you know, same thing. At my old house, I built a, a massive room for them with, you know, had all these Java trees and, you know, ropes they could climb across the room and things like that. I mean, I, I don't think it's right to, to keep animals just trapped in, you know, small cages and stuff like that. And even though snakes don't move around as much as, as other animals, you know, still, if you give them the opportunity to, they, they do. You know, I mean, the, you know, the snakes I have, you know, you mentioned I have a you know, few different species. You know, I have the one rat snake, I have four carpet pythons, the rest are all reticulated pythons, you know, mm. mostly dwarf super dwarf retics. And, and, and those, you know, so the dwarf super dwarf retics, the, the carpet pythons, I mean, they, they are, you know, semi-arboreal snakes. They, they like to climb. They, well, even the rat snakes are active. That's yeah, active yeah, 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 yeah. The rat snake is an active species too. It doesn't climb up the stuff in that room like the other ones do as much, but I mean, it still moves around a lot. And, uh, so yeah, no, I had that, it's a 12 by 12 room, you know, uh, addition I had built on, uh, to the, to the snake room. So I still have them, you know, all their separate enclosures and, and things like that. But then it's nice to be able to take them out and, you know, put them in that room for a few days at a time and let them you know, crawl around, get exercise, you know, actually build some muscle tone to them. So they're not just stuck in a six foot animal plastics cage all the time. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah. yeah it's fun. Yeah. I've got a camera set up in there. So it's nice to be able to, you know, to watch them or whatever and stuff. And then, you know, when I get up in the morning, I can actually, you know, look at the playback and, you know, see, oh, look, they were here and then they were here, then they were here, then they were here. Like time lapse. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can see how much, you know, and, and, and they do. I mean, you know, sometimes they'll move around a lot. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's, it's you know, they'll literally just pick a spot and they'll sit there and they will stay there the whole night and they won't move, you know, and same thing they do in their cage and stuff, you know, sometimes. But then other times they are active the whole night, you know, all over the place. And How many snakes will you put in there at a time? Ever, ever multiple, or is it usually just one? Or? Oh no! I mean, I'll put I'll put eight, ten of them in there at a time oh, sometimes. Sweet. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, like I said, they have you know plenty of room. It's a twelve by twelve room. Um, they can you know, easily There's spread a lot out of areas and stuff like that. within that room too. You yeah. got dozens of yeah. Blind yeah. spots. Yeah. And now all those levels areas. too, all those boards yeah. that are stacked with the holes on top yeah. of each other to move to different. They can get all the way up to the ceiling yep. if yeah. they want to climb all the way up. Yeah, and and of course I have you know many more female snakes than I do males and I make it a point not to put two males in there at the same time just in case with but, the retakes hey you gotta watch yeah that. exactly yeah, yeah fun, that's man. awesome man I'm so like, we have a segment that we do at, uh, on each of our podcasts just to kind of kick off the silliness of the conversation now that we've got all that stuff out of the way it's called diving deep in the in the shallow end okay and so uh, this one is from our buddy Duran who's creepily listening from across the room <laughs> over there with Miss Gina Ruck and uh, he wants to know what do your uh, your product purchases say about who you are as a person? So he asked it specifically, like, what 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 is the kind of car that you drive say about you as a person, or kind of like what what is a stereotype type that is true that you can make when you see oh, and I I would broaden that to more than just cars, but like oh, this person wears this brand drives that car or you know what I mean so that with close to a hundred percent accuracy I can say that that person is like that so the example he gave me is that Prius drivers are going to drive slow so if I want to go somewhere <laughs> fast don't get stuck behind a Prius because they're driving slow and I'll defend the Prius drivers drivers out there because I've driven Priuses before, not owned them, but yeah, I've driven Priuses before too. I was just thinking about rented them. I was driving, yeah. rented, I was trying to pass somebody on the five in the fast lane. They were in a uh, like Camaro or something, and, <laughs> and they wouldn't let me pass, and they even flipped me off. And I was like, "What the hell? It's just because I'm driving a Prius, isn't it?" It's like I want to yeah. go. They fast. were judging you. you guys. They were judging. <laughs> well, you were breaking the mold there because you were just renting. But I'll say the way the Prius makes it seem like, "Ooh." you can get a little more economy if you lighten your foot off that gas pedal you're like oh it's like a video game if i just go 35 miles on the freeway look how many miles i'm getting yeah that's that's probably true i mean if you want to expand that outside of like purchases besides just cars i mean 
I don't know what to do with that, dude. I'm gonna need some outside perspective from you guys. Like, I'll list off all the things I've bought in the last. Uh, you know, I'd love to know <laughs> just what, random what, crap. What, what, <laughs> no, no, I mean, okay. So I've been wearing this Fitbit for a while, right? I, I've had a Rolex. I've had watches from Italy and stuff that I got just because I had much money and like no kids. But now that I wear this Fitbit all the time because it's functional. It tracks my sleep. I'm, I wake up and I get to look at the little thing and like, how much did I sleep? Was it good sleep? Do I need to go back to sleep? And that's great. And I do that. It I means this that a lot. your body is falling apart and you've stopped worrying about your personal <laughs> image. <laughs> it's a dad thing. <laughs> this flannel I got because I saw a ghost one time in uh, Butte, Montana. And I was like, that's the flannel that ghost is wearing. So I've, and I've had it for a long time. I wear it a lot. I've worn this on the entire trip so far. If you watch any of the content I'm putting out in this entire trip, it's going to be in this flannel. I wasn't planning that. I did pack three or four other shirts and, and other clothes, but somewhere... I'm, I would say that I'm it's warm, soft, shirt. and it represents your uh, constant attempt to apply meaning where there is none to objects in life. <laughs> I have one vehicle. I, I've bought like three, three different Toyota Tundra. I had a 2011, I got a 2015, I got a 2017. Um, and then when COVID hit and I was leasing the last vehicle I had, which was maybe even a newer Tundra, I just said, no, we don't need two cars. We're just going to have the Toyota Highlander that I bought Hillary back in like, you know, 2012 or whatever. I was like, we'll just, we'll just use that to get around for a while until we need to like, you know, really go a bunch of places. And, but now here it is, uh, two years later and I still haven't gotten a second vehicle just because You'll get you know, around to it. I've been having fun with the, <laughs> the family, you know, just brought us closer together as a family to only, if you know, for driving somewhere to be somewhat together. Um, you know, it has its challenges at times. I rent a car if I need to go somewhere, you know, separate, which is also nice, actually. Uh, so I don't know what that says either. But I would definitely just, you know, I'd probably get another Tundra. <laughs> well, they have the like new ga- ones. Gas prices are completely are pushing higher now. than I've ever seen in my life, but I'm still, you know, I'd probably get the truck. Yeah. Well, I like to drive fast, so I have a Tesla Model 3 performance, and I can't stand driving slow. Um, as far as the clothes I wear, most of the time I'm in gym clothes because... I work out every day and they're comfortable. <laughs> and as far as purchases, I don't know. Uh, Super dwarfs? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, animals because I like them, guns because I like shooting. <laughs> I like to go fast too. I should mention that most of those tundras I had the uh, aftermarket TRD supercharger installed. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't stand like when you're driving on the interstate, you know, and both lanes are taken up and somebody's in the passing lane going the speed limit and they won't let you buy them, you know? It's like one of the only things that legitimately actually pisses me off. Oh, it really, life. really pisses me <laughs> off, yeah. Like, like, I would love one day to just, like, go Grand Theft Auto and just steal a vehicle and then everyone that acts like that just run them off the road. I used to, <laughs> I da- I used, I used to daydream. I used to daydream about having a little, uh, you know, front-mounted rocket launcher. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a monster truck where you just drive over Drive over them, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny to me is that I think that uh, Tesla owners definitely have, like, a rep. Like, oh, look at the little greeny planet guy or whatever like or 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 that you're bougie or something like that like ooh tesla it's kind of kind of like a luxury car but really not that expensive i mean i mean they have like more expensive ones or whatever but they're you know but what what's funny to me is that i know the the backstory with you is you traded in your you had a challenger which which one no, was I, it? Had hellcat. A, I had a hellcat charger before hellcat charger that yeah. you traded in for your tesla because of performance yeah, yeah, the Tesla is much faster. I mean, it, it, it smokes it, you know, faster zero to 60, that, that instant yeah. torque. It's just super fun, you know. I mean, you're out of light and you have somebody, you know, around here, you have the, the rednecks, their big diesel trucks, and they're revving them up and stuff like that, you know, and you're next to them at a light, it turns green, and, you know, you hit it in that Tesla, and you're I think, 500. I you're, think it does plant your nose in the back of the... Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, you're, 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 you're 500 feet, you know, past yeah, that light, Brian you know, driving around with them before, before they even get under the light, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's like a, the little uh, mini cultural experience when people come into town, I'm like, hey, who wants to ride over there with Blake so he's not lonely? And then what does that they say? get out of the car, and they're like, white as a ghost, what does that say wearing about a flannel. Blake, what does that say about Blake? Because you, like, I mean, I'd, nail, I'd, like, rattle off a couple of purchases, and you, like, immediately, like nailed down what that yeah, says about well, me like Blake, with dead Blake accuracy a, like to where it's like <laughs> how did you do that like, Blake, Blake is a uh, douche uh, a douchey bougie oh, okay. yeah <laughs> consumer no <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's into branding and very concerned about his personal brand. No, honestly, I, w- I wouldn't say that about you at all, actually, because your purchases are 
if you if you try to judge people based on their you know like the the brands they wear or something you're kind of all over the place so i think you're more practical than that that's why i said about mm-hmm. the tesla like moving from like a hellcat you know what i mean to a tesla is kind of like the hellcat is like oh these are great they get you know six gallons to a mile though but they you know great on power Twelve. and all this kind of, oh okay <laughs> 12 gallons to a mile <laughs> Miles to <laughs> <laughs> and then going to a Tesla that's, you know, complete electric or whatever. But, but, uh, uh I mean, that just kind of shows me like, I, I, I would say a certain open-mindedness, you know what I mean? Like you're trying to live for the here and now, if you've got a gun collection and stuff like that, that's, that's kind of a fun way, you know, like you're military, right? I was, yeah. Eight years. Yeah. yeah. So obviously not Marines because you never get out of that. So which branch were you? <laughs> I was Army. <laughs> uh-huh. That makes sense. Just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> I give you one there. But uh, yeah, so so you you know you've you've got your guns and stuff. That's something that you enjoy. That's a that's a hobby and a passion for you. The animals, everything that you're doing, you're building uh, playgrounds and stuff, giant rooms for your animals, so that you can participate in the behavior. You know, I'd say that you're more of an experienced guy. I also know that you happen to spend a lot of food on consumable, or a lot of money on consumables, like food. You know, we went to a restaurant tonight, and I told everybody, I was like, you know, Blake, pick these places. I said, my recommendation, you know, get what you want, but my recommendation is get whatever Blake orders, because he about, goes to the restaurant and everybody gets, did, and it was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, except Duran. Yeah, Duran being the different <laughs> weirdo getting the burrito. And it was, but I thought it was funny bag. that when the server came to the table and was like, was like it was like oh, who like had the burrito six. and it was like oh Duran did and then then he's like still standing there like with five of the same plate like waiting for, who's getting what next and I was like oh and and those go to everybody else <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that hard buddy they're all exactly the same Just well, well, you're, right, you're right I mean I, I guess you know uh, you know you said that I'm more about experiences and, and yeah I mean you know I probably spend more money on on traveling. Traveling, vacations. Yeah, well, even it, it, we're exactly. talking about with the reptile industry. Like, this is fun. I'm going to go to all these reptile shows now. Buy sure. hotels, plane tickets, food, all the, you know, travel sure. expenses. Sure, and, 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 and I love traveling out of the country, too. But nothing too, to show so, for it. You know, it's not like you're trying to get areas. a good deal, spend $1,000 in travel to get a good deal. <laughs> trying to wedge your general. way in so you can do some work for US ARC for free. <laughs> oh, well. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, right, yeah. How could you? <laughs> I see your evil plan. It's all about the money, isn't it? <laughs> you and your pro bono work. Get out of here. <laughs> no, I, I do enjoy traveling a lot, though. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's all experiential. Yeah, yeah, experiences. Yeah, I would yeah. say that. I would say that. I don't know that the brands that you're purchasing represent this, but I would say that your purchases kind of show me that it's like a life is short sort of attitude you know what i mean or like i don't know well you gotta well, enjoy it there, there's no point in working your ass off and just working and working and working yeah. you know you, you work you know for, for me i you know i work to I mean provide for my family and then to enjoy life you know yeah. to travel to have those experiences you know me my wife my kids so i think the difference there is that most of us defer the gratification like oh i'll do that when i'm older no, you can't. You know what I mean? You, you, you can't do that. No, yeah. definitely And you're spending no, no, it you on your youth. I mean, you can, but, yeah. but you might regret it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's terrible. I mean, who wants to wants to work for 40, 50 years and yeah. then, you and know, just be, 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 be old and then, then, yeah, old, and then yeah. even if you have money when, you know, at, at that time, you know, after you retire and stuff and, and you know, you're old, it's not, as fun to, it's not as fun to, yeah, it's not as fun to do those things yeah. and stuff, you know, and. You know, hey, do you do you want to go to Mexico and you're sixty years old and go on the ropes courses and drive ATVs and go caving <laughs> and stuff like that? No, yes. but do you want to do it now? Yes, I hell, do. Hell, yeah. Hell, yeah. If you want to, how able will you be? Yeah, yeah to? exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about your purchases, dude? I mean, I feel like anything you purchase is like, let's, 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 even if I'm buying it, let, as long as it looks like I didn't, <laughs> and it's just like something that, you know, even if you have to spend a lot of money on something. <laughs> you talking about crappy chic? <laughs> yeah, just to spend a lot of money and time making something look like I pulled it out of the trash. Exactly. Like, as long as it's brown and, you know, it doesn't have, you know, it looks like it came from like a, a previous century. and <laughs> has some old wood, some rusted metal. Yeah. It's, it's good. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny that you were saying that because as you were saying that, like from my perspective, I was like, I don't make purchases unless they're snakes. <laughs> like, I don't buy new stuff. Like, I've got a buddy who has the same size shoe as me that's a serial shoe collector. So, like, I've got 12 pairs of shoes from this guy. I'm like, I don't know. I'll just wear whatever you're not wearing. Like, 
I could care less about shoes. The car I'm driving right now is like a puke green minivan because it's what was for sale at the dealer down the <laughs> lot and I just needed a car that day. And I was like, it can fit people and stuff. You know what I mean? We were talking about the seats that fold all the way down or was stow and go seating. So I was like, that works, you know? So it's just like whatever gets me to the next thing. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I need this today. I'll get it. I need that today. I'll get it, you know? So I don't know. I, I don't, I don't purchase things. And then on the other hand, you know, we were talking about like how much Ashley hates those house snakes now. She totally gets the super dwarves. <laughs> she cannot stand the house snakes. And anyone that watched the uh, vlog channel that we have probably saw that unboxing video where I like whisper a number. She's like, how much did you spend on these? I whisper a number and she's like, why don't I have kitchen cabinets yet? You know what I mean? I was like, because that's just something stupid you put stuff in. Who wants to spend money on Dumb things like kitchen cabinets. What moot decided we need cabinets anyways? You can just put all the stuff on the boxes they came in. Garrett's clearly Garrett's never heard the saying, happy wife, happy life. Uh, but yeah. no, <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, not registering. <laughs> so she like intercepted an email between me and my 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 guy, you know, my dealer, my house snake dealer. <laughs> and she saw he had an itemized uh, invoice on there. I was like, oh boy, this is going to stretch her because this is another big purchase. But those are the only things I purchase. And and I don't know what is the, uh, the but the crappy sheet angle I hadn't thought about what is what is that so say? what does it say that Garrett buys a box of worms instead of new cabinets for his wife <laughs> selfish <laughs> a little selfish, selfish there that's probably true yeah <laughs> to be fair Ashley is very uh, like she doesn't like money she's like a time person like spend well, time with me yeah and, yeah. and she still me. seems to be you know happily married to him so he must be really good at BS and, and just like yeah. you know being able to talk his way through like this is really what we need even if it's you know and, and, and make the justification that house snakes are more important than kitchen cabinets I don't, I don't know she didn't seem too happy with him when she was over here this past weekend and you know we talked no, we brought up the house snakes there was no there was no selling of the house snakes <laughs> yeah. and I gonna say snake salesman as I may be there's no selling Ashley on house snakes that's for sure so yeah, I didn't have to sell her on the on the super doors because I already like had that when you're married, so they're like grandfathered in, and it it just snowballed from there. <laughs> but the house snakes were something new, so she's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> we must have similar wives uh, in a way. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have I said that? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely able to do a lot of things. I've 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 reeled myself in a little bit more to be like you know consider what other people's lives might be affected by by my life and what i choose to do a bit but uh, no 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 ultimately i just do what i want <laughs> I just, and, and i've said this before it's, it's it's hurts to say it out loud but to, it's the truth luckily for my family i like them <laughs> and i want to spend time with them otherwise i wouldn't <laughs> two peas in a pod you and me, Brian. I'm still, I'm still curious about what the crappy sheep thing says about me, though. Why can't I just have nice things? My, my wife was mad. She bought me those. The classic example is those blue light glasses. You know, they're just like these glasses you wear because you stare at the computer screen all day, right? It's supposed to keep you from staying up all night and having headaches or whatever. Yeah, I bought some on your recommendation. Yeah, they're good. They work. Yeah, they work great. great. I don't don't do anything on the screen without them now. I'm like, where are they? I can't do my work until I find them. (laughs) But my point was, like, I knew I would end up being on on video at some point in those glasses. You know what I mean? They're almost like a part of the costume or something. Clark Kent. Yeah, so I had to, uh, yeah. So they just looked like normal glasses to me. I was like, mm, so you tap that's not good enough. So I taped them in the tape center right in the <laughs> just to give them a little more character, like as if they had been broken and taped back together. And those are perfectly new glasses. And my wife's like, why did you do that? Why can't you just wear the nice glasses I bought you? I was like, no, they look too normal. Like half of me wants to take, like I've got this watch that I won at the US ARC auction. And this is the first one I did. And I, I was very tempted. I didn't do it just to take some sandpaper to the, face of it so it would be all scratched up like you know what yeah, you know what I, it, <laughs> I don't I'm I like oh this is a, I paid 2500 bucks for this watch just to win it from Justin Kabilka and I was like let me sandpaper it I, I think that the <laughs> part of me was thinking that my initial read off of that was that you 
want to have nice things but don't want people to think that you want to have nice things so you just get things that you think are nice and then mess them up or get them to the point where it's like <laughs> those aren't as nice as they could be but 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 uh, then I just then I just went to what was probably really the case and you're just a bit of a masochist <laughs> <laughs> those might be a both yeah a little bit true I guess I don't know. <laughs> or or even like I would say like uh I don't know. So, some of me, part of me, like I, I dress the way I want to. I talk the way I want to. I just do the Garrett thing. And I'm like, you either get it or you don't. You know what I'm saying? Like unapologetic for who I am. And so it's kind of like, you got to judge me on character, not on appearances. And if you judge me on appearances, then you suck as a human anyway. So, hmm. you know, maybe there's a little bit of that, you know, kind of like a rebellious streak against you know yeah it looks nice i mean those, those couches dude i mean maybe it's just depending on your taste but like the couches are those are an easy sell for me dude yeah but even those was like they're nice couches right i didn't sandpaper them or anything but how many times did i mention you i can't wait till they're old <laughs> you know what i mean i don't want to like do it there and i and even the couches like they're not like modern or nice or whatever. I was just like, I want the straightforward, standard, most classic looking leather Chesterfield couches. And I had them made in England and shipped over here because that's where all the best Chesterfield couches come Wow, talk come about from. bougie douche douche. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, if I was buying them for my wife, I would cheap out. But they're for the snakes. <laughs> Man, <laughs> and you, I want them to reflect well on my super dwarf yeah, and, are, of course, house snakes. <laughs> you, are, you are fortunate that Ashley does not listen to this podcast. Uh, I'm, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad she doesn't listen to this podcast. She's fed up with me already, actually. You're like, oh, we're somewhat happily married. We went on a date last weekend. And, uh, and she was, uh, it was the day after we were here and I don't remember what I said because honestly, as it leaves my mouth, I'm not thinking about it anymore most of the time. But, uh, she was like, you know, you are so lucky that I'm not meeting you today because I don't think that you could possibly convince me to marry you again. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, but I'm stuck, so whatever. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks, babe. Glad I still do it for you. 12 Wait, years of marriage. So when, when did you buy your, how did you meet Garrett? Uh, I met Garrett because um, I got my first door free take off him. Okay. Um, how did you... Was it the sh it was a local show, right? No, 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 it wasn't. No, no. So as I mentioned, you know, the, the acoustic rat snake was my first one. And, you know, I'd had that for, you know, a couple of years already. And then I was like, hey, you know, why not why not get another one or whatever? So um, I was like you know, trying to think of what kind I wanted. I was like, you know, I, I want to get something that's if you were going to get one more snake, it was yeah, probably your yeah, thought, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. No, no, <laughs> no, no, snakes no, no, later. no. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and I was like, you know, I want something that's that's bigger, a little more, you know, impressive, or whatever than than a than, than a you know uh, a rat snake um, or a corn snake or any kind of anything like that. And you know, I didn't want anything huge, like a big, you know, fat berm or you know even boa or you know big mainland chick or anything like that. And no, I was, so I was just looking up online, like, you know, the different types of snake species and, and things. I didn't at that time know, you know that much about them. And uh, then I came across a bunch of videos on dwarf, super dwarf retics. And reach uh, out reptile videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and well, including a lot of the reach out reptile videos and stuff. And so, uh, so I was like, yeah, you know, these are, you know, these are really cool. You know, they're, they're, you know, impressive snakes. They don't get too big. They're um, they're not those like long, uh, but also very thick, heavy bodied snakes like the boas. That, you know, ten foot boa could weigh eighty pounds or whatever and stuff. I was like, I don't want anything like that. You know, and um, so this seemed like you know the perfect kind of snake. And then I was looking into you know where do you get these and came across Garrett's videos and then looked up you know where where is this guy? <laughs> oh, he's only he's only just over an hour away from me. <laughs> I'll give him a call. 45 so, minutes in a Tesla Model S performance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Model 3 so, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, no, so I, so, I, so I called him up, and, um, yeah, I took, uh, took Lindsay and the kids up there, and uh, Garrett gave us a tour of his basement at the time before you moved yeah. in the new yeah. facility and stuff, and um, kids held some cool snakes. Um, yeah. 
and you got left the first with one from literally you. like the cheapest snake that I had. All I wanted was a normal, you know. I mean, yeah. I looking at the videos, I was like, you know, the, I nice really like the I like the look of just the normals. That's you know, I, I, that's all I want. That's it. Perfect customer. Now and he has then, all these expensive snakes. Yeah, and then after that, <laughs> <laughs> after that, then I found out, you know, um, hey, look, you know, they're they're cool animals, but you can also, you know, you can also make some good money off of these and stuff. And so I decided to get a couple more. And <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was so that first drive up there. That was what about two and a half years ago ish? Two years ago? Two and a half or so? Uh, well, this no, because their snakes are not that old. Right, two years ago. It it, it was uh, it would have been just over two years ago because it was in December. Okay. So this this past December would have been two years. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's like yeah, two years, two months ago. Cool. Yep. There you go. Can I ask you a question that might make you highly uncomfortable and is extremely personal? Sure. Go ahead. Oh sweet! <laughs> how how is uh how is Garrett not infiltrated your life with Jesus yet? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> Personally, I've not. I, I mean, you know, to, to each your own. I've not been, you know, ever really a religious person. Um, my mom is very religious. Um, you know, I respect that. If 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 religion helps people be better people and yeah, you know, helps them in life, great. Um, I just I, I never. I never got into the, the you know. It's not that I don't believe in things or the uh, higher power or, 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 or stuff like that. It's just that um, I don't believe in the organized religion. Mm. I don't believe in people telling you, you know, oh, if you don't believe this, you're automatically going to hell, or mm. if you don't do this, you're automatically a bad person. My whole take on life is, if that you live life your thing, and you're it? yeah, I'm 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 the same the same way okay. actually. I'm so, still like that. Okay, so 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 my belief is, you know, if you know, if there's such a thing as like heaven and hell or anything like that, you know, I mean, if you live life and you're a good person and you treat others, you know, well and you do good, then I mean, that's that's enough to get you in heaven. If you're a piece of shit and you treat people bad, then you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, um, I, I think you should, you know, do the best you can in life. So treat you, treat you, others the best so you, you can in, in life. You believe in getting in there? I, I, I don't even know if I believe in that. No, okay. no. I mean, I, I just believe in, you know, being a good person in life. You know, treating others how, how you should. You know, okay. ma- 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 making the world a better place. And, you know, if, if religion helps people, certain people do that, great. You know, um, but I don't believe it's necessary. And um, you haven't met people like me before because I'm very different than the two of you in that regards. I'm yeah, good because of heaven and hell and God and Jesus. And if it wasn't me just doing me all the time, oh man, I'd be like the worst kind of there'd be nothing <laughs> holding me back. I mean people, you know, people can, you know, re- religion can make people better people and it, and religion can also make people really shitty people. I mean, you know, there, well, there, there are some extremists obviously and stuff that, you know, turn them into terrorists or whatever, you know? Sure. And there, there are some people that, you know, go to church all the time and stuff, but then they, you know... Fail. Yeah, yeah, they, they fail and they tell other people, oh, since you don't go to church, you know, you're a, you're, you're a bad person. You're yeah. automatically going to hell and stuff like that. You don't believe in my God, then you're a, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I, I don't think it should be like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, I had to bring it up just because there was a time when I was talking to you before when we were at uh, the Tinley Airbnb and... Um, part of me just assumes that a lot of people that congregate around Garrett well, are either followers or become or, or on their way. And you talked about um, something that happened with your brother, and I, I, I was trying to gently. I just recently like become Christian, like right before, like a couple weeks before. I think so. I was like, I was trying to gently like ask, well, how did you like deal with that, or how how did you find peace with your family and stuff? And I was just assuming that you were going to say Jesus. And then, and then when you didn't, I was like, "Oh, threw me for a loop almost." So I was like, "Because yeah. Blake's such a good guy. Like, he must. He clearly like you know has a role model that is <laughs> heavenly." <laughs> that's, so that's my point. I I've had. I'm always baffled. I'm I'm never surprised when people are idiots and jerks. But when people not, are nice, I'm like, "What's up with you? You know Jesus or something?" Because. You seem nice. And when they say no, I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in that regard, I guess I guess my parents are my role models. You know, I think my parents are, are both great people. And so, I mean, yeah, learn from them. Where, where do they get their uh, goodness, do you think? Or do you know? Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> 
as I said, my mom, is, it, my mom is very religious. You know, I don't bring up religion with her ever. You know, because it's you know she feels strongly about it, and you know that's 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 great for her. And you know, um, <laughs> my, 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 my dad, you know, um, yeah, not, not so much or whatever. Uh, it, not as like my mom or anything like that. Um, but um, no, I mean, you know, also, I mean, my mom's just, uh, and my dad, they're, they're just both good people. I mean, they, they, they yeah, again, you know, they they never treat people bad. They, they always try to, you know, make things better, you know, however they can, so. I've met your mom, and the, the two things I would say about her in the brief amount of time I've met her is, like, number one, she seems very empathetic and concerned to make things better for people, mm -hmm. and number two... Super opinionated, and I would not want to argue about religion <laughs> and politics with her because you're like, oh wow, she's coming on pretty strong just with the hello. Can you imagine talking religion with this woman? <laughs> no, yes. she was great. I, yeah. Actually, uh, we but, were but at she's... a Halloween party of, of yours, and me and my wife talked to your mom almost the whole night. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so, yeah. So, but she's she's Christian. She is. Yes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. A very interesting awesome. person. I, I was a. Uh, God wanted me to ask you. This is a very new thing for me. It's honestly possibly more uncomfortable for me to ask you that question in the first place. Because I was very <laughs> sheepish about asking it. But um, no, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't bash religion at all. Uh, I mean, hell, I mean, our you know our kids go to a, a Catholic school, <laughs> you know, so um, not because of the religion. <laughs> I, I could care less if they. You know, teach them about religion in school or not. Um, just an education. You know, it's just a, it's just a good school or whatever and stuff. But, um, yeah. Cool. Fair enough. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it any harder because the, the one of the things that I always hated about people, who are, you know, quote unquote religious people, is how pushy they could be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, now, You're rapidly becoming one of them. <laughs> I don't want to be. I now I just know is I mean for what I found because I it, it wasn't I didn't have like some moment of crisis that pushed me into it per se. In fact. At the moment that I actually came to it, I, life was actually looking pretty up. It was like I was getting to this point. I was like, man, life is per maybe better than it's ever been at this point. And then somehow that, that took the, that next step into the thing where I know a lot of people come into it like in prison or drug addiction and they, they like find God through that to help escape it. I've been through all that and never still didn't, you know, find God, quote unquote, through a prison or drugs or anything like that. So anyway, it's just some, but now I see why people are like, oh, I just, I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> like, no. you know, I'll say this about uh, pushy religious people. A lot of, I mean, some people are, if you're going to be pushy about anything, they're just awkward, right? You know, mm -hmm. like, hey, can I get your phone number? Or can I borrow some money? You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's, it's some people just make that really awkward really quick. But um, it was actually something that an atheist said, and it was, um, I'm going to get his name wrong, but who are the two famous ma magicians? There's the big guy and the little guy. David was... Blaine and, wait, oh, Penn yeah. Teller? Oh, no, t yeah, Penn, Penn and Teller. Teller. Which, mm -hmm. which one's the bigger guy? Is that Oh, I don't know. Teller I'm sorry, Penn or Penn? <laughs> yeah, that's, that was why I was yeah, going to get sure. it wrong. Okay. I don't remember, but okay, so yeah, someone can, if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, you can comment or you can jump on our Facebook page for Searchables Reptiles and let us know. But the, uh, the bigger guy, he sat down and he did like a selfie style video one time and he's an atheist and he, you know, professes that and all that. And he was telling a story how he was coming off of the stage and he had done a show and he's walking through and somebody just said something like, you know, I, oh, I just, I've always loved your show and all this kind of stuff. And let me tell you about Jesus. You know what I mean? And they were, they were kind of pushy about it and all that kind of stuff. And I thought he was gonna complain. And he said, he goes, no, I never mind that kind of person. I hate all the other Christians. And it was like, what? <laughs> and it was kind of, yeah, it was a, a unique perspective. So what he said was, he goes, here, check this out. If you do believe that there's a heaven and a hell, and you also believe that I am going to hell because I don't accept your God, but you can smile to my face and let me walk away without trying to do something that would bring me into an eternal heaven. What kind of a scumbag do you have to be? And I was like, that's a really good point. Kind of convicted me a little bit, you know what I mean? But I think you got to approach that with some tact or whatever. But that was a good point is that, you know, the pushy person that's trying to talk to you about religion, 
they, there's no motivation for them to do that other than maybe they really care. Well, I don't know. It depends on who the person is or the church or whatever. I mean, maybe that's one way to look at it. I still think it's super annoying when you have like, those people <laughs> that come to your door and, well, they, and, they, and they try to take a half an hour of your time telling you about like handing pamphlets. And I think that's where the tax comes you. in. That's, that's where the awkwardness <laughs> maybe comes. Like I, don't, like, I don't want to you know put a bad taste in your mouth from this. Like, if I get the, you know, try to think about your customer, I guess, you know, yeah. read it a little bit, like making you uncomfortable and making you want to run away. Like, that's not good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah but but i mean so it, so here's kind of interesting it actually goes back to kind of like the brands and what do you buy say about you thing like that i think a lot of people and i said i have this like rebellious streak or whatever i think a lot of people um probably the greatest uh like fear motivating factor that a lot of us have is kind of the the social conflict or you, you know what i'm saying that that can come up like oh, we don't want to go in and mess things up for everybody or make anyone uncomfortable in life or, or do any of these things. So we kind of tiptoe through life a little bit. Probably most of us a lot more than we should, honestly. I'm not even talking about religion. I'm just talking about like, you know the right thing to do and don't do it. Or you know what I'm saying? You don't stand, like you believe something and something's happening wrong and you kind of allow it because the fear of the awkward situation that it might bring up or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I thought that was an interesting perspective that he had about the annoy, annoying, pushy religious person is that he's like, you know, he's like, how many of my friends say they're a Christian and think that I'm going to hell and just allow that to happen? And mm -hmm. to be because fair, the only, reason I, of to be fair the only reason I bring it up is that I, just knowing for me, like what is brought to my life uh, in a short amount of time and how I just watch that blossom, I think for somebody like like you, I wouldn't have brought it up to you at all if I didn't think that it was something that would just like drive this this power and and do great things in your life as well. You know, otherwise I would not even broach the subject. Period. So, and I and I, and I do like you a lot, and I he's, I don't, I don't believe that. that. Like I, I I need I need Christ to be a good person, be motivated, and get out of bed at the end of the day. Blake is one of the most like blindly motivated person people that I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many times have you come to me with like business ideas or something like, oh, you right. gotta do this. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and this Blake, is, you're this making is, me tired. This is a question, this is a question that I approach to, it's a hard question for a lot of, a lot of Christians to answer is like, how, what about people that don't even know Jesus that are really, really good people and have a really good effect on the world and basically follow the teachings of Christ without even knowing it? Yeah. What's up? What about those people? Yeah, and that's a hard question for people to answer. Like, oh, there's a lot of hard questions to answer. Yeah. I think that's why there's religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Some of it for me is a, is is uh, like a the cop out of being able to say, I don't know, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna focus more on the priorities that I have at the here and now and what can I do like you were saying if when religion makes you be a better person or whatever then great go go for it yeah I mean it definitely I, I, does for me yeah and 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 you know that's great you know like I said if it helps people I mean I guess my personality I'm just a very kind of I guess logical person in a way um you know I kind of in a way I look at religion as like you know people have a need to have a, an answer or an explanation for things and stuff, you know? So like when, before people knew the world was round, they thought it was flat. They thought you could sail off the edge of it, you know? And, um, and, and then they, you know, figured out that wasn't the case and stuff, you know? People, you know, they, they have a need to, to understand things or have an answer for things. You know, they can't say, you know, they, they, they can't just say, I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and so when you, you know, ask people, you know, about existence or, you know, and humans and stuff like that, you know, uh, they don't want to just say, I don't know. I don't know where people came from. And so religion is the answer and stuff, you know, and God and, you know, God created it and everything, you know? So I think it's maybe something that people do for, to feel secure, you know, something they, do you feel like uh, made up, that mold? Uh, made up like a long time ago, whatever and stuff. Um, I mean, no. <laughs> but, yeah, I was going to say, but, yeah, I don't but, think you're describing me right no, now. No, like, no, no, I don't need no. to feel secure. I no, do but, but, everything but, but, but dangerous I think, that I can. Yeah, yeah. I never know the answers to anything. Yeah. I'm totally fine with it. Yeah. yeah. I guess I've just, I don't know, I've had a, a lot of experiences in life. I've seen a lot of things and stuff. And, and part of me also says, you know, if there were 
a God that's looking out for people and things like that, you know, why would he allow certain things to happen? That's, mm, that's a very good question. question. It's an excellent question. And so, so that's, I mean, those are my biggest kind of holdups on, on, on religion. And yeah, again, it's not that I'm against it. It's just that I don't think you need it to be a good person or, or do what's right. I'll tell you one of the more challenging experiences that I've had in my life, like the way I always view that, like kind of, you know, you're, you're talking about these large exponential questions, existential, what's the word? <laughs> existential. Like, questions, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, how can a good God allow bad things to happen to good people? That, you know what I mean? If the basic of that question, it's very hard to deal with. For me, I was like, I don't know, he's like a lot bigger than us. So that's kind of like saying an ant looking at me and being like, how could you make that business decision? I'd be like, excuse me, you're an ant. You have no clue of the context of my world. So I just kind of looked at it like that. Like, I don't get it. I don't know. He's God and I'm a man. So who am I going to question, you know, to question him? And I didn't, uh, that was a little bit of my like personal ignorance or youth at the time, I guess. Um, that maybe I hadn't experienced enough tragedy in my life to understand how important that question really is. Yeah. Because when I was living in Indonesia and that tsunami happened and I went there and I did the relief efforts for, it was like a week or 10 days or something like that, I was just blown away by the death and destruction and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like, man, that was, that was challenging to me. And I remember sitting down and being like, you know, when you see stuff like this, it's kind of easy to answer that question from a really cold hearted place in your life where you're like, well, I don't know, God bigger. You don't know. And you know, you kind of write off other people's suffering, I guess, if you say that. But I remember it was all I could do to say, you know, I mean, for me, I believe there's a God. I think there's too much, you know, logical evidence to say that there's not some kind of God, right? Um, But uh, I, you know, I I remember it was all I could say to just be like, you know what, I I have gone through too much stuff in my life with you, God, you know, I'm like praying to him, to to kind of like challenge or you know, like it doesn't it doesn't make me challenge my thought of your existence or anything like that and i said but i can't explain this one that's really hard you know what i'm saying and part of like going through a lot of stuff like that when you see like really bad stuff you just kind of like bury it and you know segment it down inside somewhere and put it off somewhere and don't deal with it anymore right don't think about it I remember saying, I'm just going to go ahead and bury this one now, which was probably not the healthiest decision or way to look at it, but that was my coping mechanism. But I'm like, but someday you're going to have to just, you know, like explain this one to me. I don't get that. Yeah. I mean, you 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 always hear people say, oh, it's part of God's bigger plan and, you know, and and, 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 and so forth. And, you know, that's, (laughs) I just, I just. You feel like that's a cop out and that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't have the answer for you on that one. But yeah, that was, that was it for me. So I can, I can actually relate to that coming from a different perspective, you know, mm-hmm. that that's a tough one to answer when you're really talking about like horrible tragedies and social injustice and all that kind of stuff. I've got a pretty good book that I read recently that has a list of like the chapters are a list of questions like that one and that one included is, is one of the chapters of that question mm-hmm. I'd love to give it to you just to if I'll if read it, do yeah. it. Sweet. Yeah. It's, okay it's, but here's the deal I'm gonna broker the deal for you right now <laughs> like you have to watch what was the movie that you really like? Cowspiracy was it that one no it was another one Forks what, Over Knives huh was it, what, what was the movie that you were you were trying to give me a copy of it the one time which is funny because I'm already a vegan you're a vegetarian for the people that aren't don't know you or whatever listening yeah yeah. remember you were you were we were talking about you're talking about earthlings earthlings is that what it is it is are you earthlings.com yeah yeah so so, there was a movie that you were telling me about oh you got to watch this movie and i was like no i've actually seen that one yeah you're talking about the 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 um documentary about uh society's treatment of animals is yes. that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Earthlings. Earthlings. So, 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 Earthlings. So, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So my it's, buddy Mike Love uh, wrote a song, that, and the, the chorus goes, W W W dot 
Earthlings.com, baby. <laughs> I swear, it's, 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 I'm not making that up. No, it, it, it's, it's, it's great. It's like narrated by Joaquin Phoenix or whatever stuff, but it's, yes, uh, it focuses so on um, like society's treatment of animals. Like I said, you know, it talks about like the, you know, animals used for the food industry, uh, animals used for uh, the entertainment industry, animals used for science experiments, animals used for. Um, I, I picked up a big part. Oh, I, mean, I uh, haven't cl- seen clothing, it. like I apparel and stuff like that. Based on the whatever. song, like I, um, I picked and, up a bit about what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and and, and it's, it's it's just it's it's really it's really good. But I mean, it's and probably you know, really tough to watch. It it is. Yeah, there's a lot of like undercover footage. You know, where people go into like these factory farms. There was there was some uh, you know where uh, you know people were uh, at a, a turkey factory farm here in West Virginia, and there were people literally taking these turkeys and just grabbing their feet and smashing them against the walls and then throwing them on the ground, stomping on them and stuff like that. And, um, you know, just the, the treatment of these animals is horrific, you know, and like the, uh, I remember like the, you know, chickens, for instance, you know, on the factory farms, you know, you have like the chickens are raised for, for the eggs, the chickens are raised for meat, you know, and like, you know, if you're, if you talk about like the ones, uh, raised for the meat, you know, they, they stick them in these huge warehouses with no windows or anything like that. They stick them in there, you know, thousands at a time. Um, cram them in there. They they take hot blades to their beaks and cut them in half, or cut the front part of so the, their their beak off, so they can't pick at each other and stuff. Uh, when when you you know they they feed them uh, so much uh, food uh, and and give them you know so many uh, you know, growth hormones and things like that, so they grow so big so fast because it saves them money, obviously, and everything you know, and. And it's disgusting because these, you know, chickens, well, first off, a lot of what they feed them, I mean, is like they'll actually literally grind up like baby chicks and feed them back to the chickens and stuff, you know, along with you know, other things. But, um, but yeah, the chickens grow so big so fast. I think uh, I remember it saying it was like the equivalent of like a two-year-old baby weighing 800 pounds. And oh, so it's just so unnatural. And, and you see the, the footage of these chickens literally dragging themselves around by their wings because their their legs have snapped beneath them and stuff like that, you know? And they're dragging themselves through just tons and tons of chicken shit because that's that's all the floor is, you know, these people walk in there with boots and they step like, you know, over a foot deep of, of just, you know, chicken shit. <laughs> and 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 it's absolutely disgusting. And these are the lives these chickens have and then they, you know, grab them and they, you know, sp- hang them upside down by their feet and they run them through the, the line where they get their head chopped off and, you know, defeathered and stuff like that and everything. And it's just, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's horrific. Yeah. I mean, like Garrett said, I'm, you know, I'm a vegetarian. I've been vegetarian my whole life. I've never had any meat or any fish ever. My, my whole family's like that. So I've been raised that way. Um, and I mean, I, so I stay like a that. Specimen that you can get nice and big and strong and not eat any meat. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's that's a complete stereotype. Is people think all vegetarians are like these you know, skinny twigs or something like that? It's total bullshit. <laughs> but um, you know, you can gain plenty of muscle in a vegetarian or vegan diet. You know, there. Are, um, anyways, the uh, yeah, you know, I, I stay vegetarian because um, I mean, for health reasons and mostly though because of the the treatment of the animals. I don't you know agree with how they're treated on the factory farms and, you know, the majority of all the meat you buy from grocery stores and things like that all comes from factory what's farms. Your, uh, what's your main source of, uh, this is definitely health related, but what's your main source of uh, like B12 and, uh, you know, getting all the, the full spectrum of amino acids? Like what are your main sources of that? I mean, I, mean, I, I your whole life, obviously you're doing it. I mean, I, I just try to eat healthy. I mean, I eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, I, I get a lot of protein. I, I, I lift a lot, you know, so I'll eat a lot of, um, a lot of beans, legumes. Uh, I, I do take a protein powder. It's a, uh, by a brand called Vega One, so it's a hundred percent plant based. Probably uh, has a bunch of B twelve in it too. It, it's mostly made from peas. I'm not sure how much B twelve is in it or whatever. B twelve doesn't come from meat; it comes from dirt. Well, yeah. that's and we wash our yeah. vegetables fair too enough. much. Yeah. Fair so yeah. you're just yeah. eating locally grown organic. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess iron is a different. Go. Yeah, maybe, yeah, sure. I think yeah. it was uh, a quote from Gandhi that said, "You can judge the greatness of a nation by the way it treats its animals." Mm. I think it's a great. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great quote because they have nothing they can give you back monetarily. Right, mm-hmm. so, so that's like, my broker well, trade. I, I got it. I got you, it. I, you uh, can take your craziness over I, here. I can tell you, and you can show them the, the book about all the answers about God, well, and then you can take your craziness, vegetarian over here, and, <laughs> and give him your movie about uh, the sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Deal, deal. <laughs> you know, 
There you go. You, you, you know, you know. There's also like you know, you, 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 you know, you said like I don't look vegetarian, but there's also a, a documentary on Netflix. Uh, well, I wasn't saying that you don't look vegetarian. I was just saying you're proof that you can be vegetarian. Okay. All right. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So, so, so there, there's also another documentary, and I forget the name of it, but it was popular, real popular when it came out. But it talks about like all these like world class athletes oh, and I know things what you're like talking that. About. And yeah, have have you seen it? It has. I haven't seen it. Was on it has, I listened, it has, I listened to like, the uh, I listened to the producer of it, or the guy okay. that like curated and put it together yeah. on a podcast, talking with somebody else who was trying to like negate it. And sure. he, he came with he came and did his homework. Like the guy that he was on the because there was a guy that he went on the podcast before, and they were kind of like downplaying everything about that that documentary and saying you know what like why it wasn't true or why this wasn't true. And then he came back on the podcast where that guy who you know like I said. Uh, filmed the documentary or it was mm-hmm. like the producer behind it came on with him and that guy <laughs> was prepared and basically shut down every argument that the other guy <laughs> yeah. had about it. Like, well, it was well, like, well, well, one of, one of the things uh, from that documentary uh, I thought was great is they had, you know, the world's strongest man on there and, you know, he's this, you know, shorter, real jacked, you know, just, you know, beast of a guy, whatever stuff. And just moving, you know, massive amounts of weight around and everything, and uh, and and vegan, yeah, right? yeah, and, 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 and so, and, yeah, 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 exactly, vegan. And and someone asked him, you know, like, you know, how do you, um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, you're you're strong as an ox, you know, how do you, how do you get so strong without eating any meat? And he's like, oxes don't eat any meat. <laughs> yeah, right. Strong as a what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 Vegetarian and, ox. Huh? And, and you look at all like the strongest animals there are, you know, gorillas. Completely, yeah. completely vegan, you know. Uh, elephants, completely vegan. Rhino, rhinos, completely vegan. You know, the the, the strongest animals there are the most muscular animals there are. Don't eat any meat. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's kind of funny how people you know are like brainwashed where they think like, you know, in order to gain muscle or you know be strong or whatever, you know, you need to eat, you need to get your protein from meat. You need to eat steaks. You need to eat chicken. Well, I think there's a couple stuff, sides you know? to that. I mean, the first one is like marketing. Right, so from like the the beef council and even the milk, all the got milk commercials and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You're talking about brainwashing. There's it is, and there's been a huge there's been a huge marketing push to yeah. uh, get people to consume more product, mm-hmm. right? So that that one's I think monetarily driven there. But I think the other side of it, even without that, is uh, the fact that like why would somebody come on? like you're talking about the podcast there at Cusco, and try to shoot down everything that is in a documentary like that if it's good information. And I think the reason would be is because you can't actually believe something like that is true if it flies in your face to the point where it would cause you to have to change. And that's where people get hung up. No matter what the position is, whether it's like, you know, for you obviously very passionate about the dietary stuff and the treatment of animals and religion and there's so many things that all of us do, but there, there's something about us and our human condition that's like, no, nah, I don't want to change. I want to be right, and I'll sit here and fight the position, and I think that's okay. I think that healthy debate is actually the, one of the best, best things that you born. can do. Yeah. yeah, but it should be a proponent of change. So, like, I, I'm very argumentative, in case anyone has not noticed somehow. But, but, uh, and my wife's like, why are you always arguing with people about stuff and talk about uncomfortable conversations and stuff? And I'm like, well, um, there's always a part of me that hopes that I'm wrong and they can prove it to me. You know what I mean? And I, and I think that, uh, you know, arguing about whatever it is, is great if you can be like, oh, wow, I never, I never thought of this. So that question you brought up, that's why I thought of that book. Cause I have that same, I had that same question that I read that book and I, and I mm-hmm. feel like I do have a good answer. Maybe even a better answer than Garrett, which is crazy. Cause he's been Christian. I don't know how long I've been. <laughs> it's, for me, it's like not even a year yet, but I've also had a much different life than, than Garrett. And I've had a much different life than you. So I would don't want to use my answer for what I came up with basically, but the book was definitely very helpful because it literally addressed a lot of those really hard questions. So that's why I'm really happy that you're open to reading it. And I think that it's the same, like, I think that similar for me, like, you know, I've been eating meat more. So I've done some different diets before. I've been, been like all raw, eating just raw food, eating just vegan food mm-hmm. for at different times. But I think that it is going to be an equal challenge for me to watch, just knowing what I know from via the song of, from my buddy of that <laughs> thing. Like I already know, like it's going to be hard for me to watch this thing. I know that. And it's probably going to make me ha- have some changes in my life that I probably needed to make. Um, so yeah, uh, change sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's that's to, to, to Garrett's point. 
uh, don't want to. Miss there was, what there I'm was going really to. one fact that did it for me because I've not been a vegan my whole life. I was like, Mr. Meat and Cheese, you know what I mean? Um, and and I'm a, a, a fairly poor vegan. If anyone's like looking up to me as a vegan role model, I'm, I'm like, oh man, I'm on the road too long. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? This has got butter in it or whatever I'm eating it. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, like, you know, we, we even fish, like I eat sushi or whatever, because I was like, yeah, okay, I'll be vegan, yeah, but not like sushi. Yeah, you raw quail egg and eel or something. Yeah, sushi. right, because, <laughs> right, because it's sushi, so sushi is completely exempt. Yeah, so, like I said, pretty poor vegan. Um, however, the, the big thing for me was that, you know, I'd always drive, like, basically, if you drive west from Pittsburgh, West Virginia area, and you go pretty much all the way to the Rockies... All you see are, are grain fields, either corn, soy, whatever. And so the one astonishing fact to me was how much of that food goes to like actually feeding, say, vegans, vegetarians, people, you know, eating that grain and how much of it goes to feeding our food when you're talking about now beef production, you know, pork production, chicken all that kind of stuff. And it, it's huge amount. I can't remember the number. I, I don't want to like misstate it, but it was like something around like 90% of all of that land from Pittsburgh to Denver mm -hmm. was cleared to grow food so that we could have larger quantities of beef and have it on every meal to the point where, you know, I get a question, you probably get this too all the time as a vegetarian, like, you don't eat meat? What do you eat? Not even sausage? <laughs> <laughs> right, like people can't even fathom not having meat in a meal. Like it, they they think it must be crazy or that you're eating just a rabbit food or, you know what I mean? No, you could, so, you, you could take the food that you feed, you know, the People's food. food over here, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and and you can completely solve world hunger, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, well, and, and, uh, I've and, got and, an important question for you before I forget it. It's an important question. So we we've discussed. So I'm gonna watch this sort of things dot com and do something that I think, like I said, I've known about this thing for literally over a decade or longer. So I wonder if my buddy wrote that song. Mm -hmm. Still haven't watched it. it. Makes me uncomfortable, and I don't. I mean. Uh, that's that's my little moment I'm going to take from this. It's going to be, you know, it's possibly affecting a big change in my life. You've known about religion a long time. Your parents are Christian, and you're accepting this, you know, this book that I'm going to give to you, and you're going to read it to answer some questions you've had. Garrett, what are you taking from this? Are you just brokering this deal? Yeah, I'm just brokering. I'm, I don't have to change. I just like to, uh, you know, pull the pin out of that grenade and throw it on that side. <laughs> Yeah. No, but that was we'll, that we'll was the think fact. of something that Garrett needs to do too. There so. you go. Yeah. yeah. You need to not scratch up your watch. <laughs> You're gonna buy something new and nice for Ashley. Get some kitchen cabinets. Yeah. Um, I think we I'm, talked I mean, about that you know, last. Another time. thing too, I didn't mention about like the the factory farms and stuff like that um, is the uh, the environmental impact it has. Well, that's is, that's what it was for me because crazy. I think you and I have maybe a little bit of a difference of opinion when it comes to the animal because like. For me, it's like you shoot guns, but you don't hunt or whatever. Like no, no, I, no. I love archery, and you know, for me, part of the culmination of that would be the ability to like go hunt and take a deer or something for my family. However, and that actually is something I still do. So again, poor vegan, right? But <laughs> well, it's the, also not contributing to factory farming. If anything, it's yeah. It's so so for me, when I say vegan, it's just a word that people kind of like. Like if I go somewhere and I say I'll eat vegan at a restaurant. And I, or I tell, it's more to tell people that are giving me food, like, give me vegan and then I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but, you know, for me, it, it's like, you're talking about the terrible things that happen to chickens and stuff like that. And people would probably say, well, not all chickens are raised like that. Well, that's true. But if you buy a little vacuum sealed piece of chicken in the grocery store, how do you know which one you're eating and whether or not you're paying people to continue treating animals that way. Yeah, well, like I said, I mean, I mean <clears throat> you know, some, you know, not all of them are, but the majority of what you buy in the grocery factory stores farm, are yeah. factory farms, yeah, well, just because it's more lucrative for Right, people. and if you, if you really wanted to be sure, then raise your own chicken. Yeah, you know, I and I'll tell you that. this. That's what I've been loving about having, we have chickens at home, my, my son pretty much raises them, he takes care of them, and I could see myself, like, after watching this, being like, right, I'm just going to eat the eggs from my chickens, and that's going to be it. Yeah. Well, so, like, you know, it was funny to me. I, I came back from hunting one time, and my mother-in-law was in town. And she was like, did you get anything? And she was all mad, like, at the thought that I would kill a deer or something. And she's like, I just don't understand. It's so, like, cruel to animals and stuff that you would go hunt a deer when you can go buy 
perfectly fine packaged beef in a store. And I was like, hang on a minute, that's backwards in so many ways. First of all, any animal that I'm eating, and this is you know from my perspective, any animal that I'm eating participated in the natural ecosystem and lived out a full life. And then I took personal responsibility for its moment of death. Well, you, know you didn't I mean? live a full life, you ended its life. Sure, okay. Fair enough, but I mean, you're talking, <laughs> but 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 even then, I'm acting in a in a sense like as a predator would, which is a part of the like natural food cycle, right? So, because uh, how many of these prey animals die of old age in the wild? You know, none unless we killed all the predators in that area, right? So, but eventually, it still would, but it still would have enjoyed more of a life. Yeah, you have not. I shot it. I understand. With yeah. an arrow or yeah. whatever. No, um, I, I, and I, I can, I can confer, you know, that's fine. I, I understand that. But I would say if everybody had to take, be responsible for taking, you know, the life of any animal they ate, uh, probably a whole lot less of them would do that. But for me, the thing was, like you said, the environmental impact. You're like, this is not some, you know, far away island of Borneo that's being flattened so that I can eat palm oil or whatever that seems so far away that it doesn't affect me. This is like the United States of America and this giant section of it has no native habitat left. And it's so that I can eat cheeseburgers or something. And that was the point where I was like, it's not worth the trade off. No, it's I mean, their the environmental the impact is is just horrendous. I mean, the, the lagoons that are on these, you know, factory farms that are full of all the, you know, animal shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they, they, they constantly, you know, mm -hmm. uh, leak out into the, the, the rivers and things like that where they, you know, kill off all the wildlife, all the fish. They, you know, pollute the, all, all the water. We even have the, that like, um, with the, the sugar farming the, 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 too, the, you know. Yeah. Like, greenhouse gases yeah, from... They're basically all factory farming or any industrial style farming, no matter what the crop, I guess. Has a pretty negative yeah, impact. Yeah, you're talking about pesticides. The, the greenhouse gases released from the farts from cows alone are um, more impactful than all the, uh, the automobiles, trains, and planes in the whole world combined. Yeah. So... Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's a big deal. And that, that's really what did it for me because, you know, for me, everything, whether it's, you know, religion or dietary decisions and stuff like that, it's more like, I, I just want to live in balance and bring that more into balance. You know what I'm saying? So if that makes sense. So, um, so if somebody shot you and ended your life early, but they ate you. Would that I'm, be okay? Yeah, I, actually, you're asking the wrong person here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, wait, he, not he's not one. He's not the guy that's going to give the answer you want uh, with that you're question. You're not going to win me with that one. You can, keep, you can go back and think about that one. He has to this Bill Burr moment where he's, he's like, oh, he's like, like, miss, you're not going to like the answer, I promise. Yeah. I would definitely be the guy that'd be like, if I die, eat me. <laughs> or just take it now so it's fresh. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, uh, yeah, it, it, it's much more of like the, you know, like in, in Pennsylvania, where this is kind of a futile argument because we're, we're entrenched or whatever, but just to like to see where I'm coming from, like in Pennsylvania, they hunted every predator out. They're gone. You know what I mean? Like that, the idea of like a larger herd management is, is it, like, it, it's just so blown out. You know what I mean? There's, um, what was that Alaskan island that they they had the, they introduced the elk to? Do you know what I'm talking about? Not sure. Mm -hmm. You should check this out. It's pretty cool. I, somebody will know that's listening to this. They said it's probably one of the best like ecological uh, experiments ever done, and it was an accident. So basically, they released this small herd of elk. I think it was like 25 or maybe 50 or something like that to this large Alaskan island. That With no was, predators. No predators, and it was the perfect. Uh, environment for the elk and the elk population was like boom and it was big and they had these giant awesome healthy elk and then it was like it, it peaked at a certain point and then two years later there were no elk and they were dead and they were gone because it, they had basically stripped the island of resources and and then died off which makes sense you can't overgraze a certain area you can't you know so because they mm -hmm. introduced one, an elk is one part of a greater food web. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're putting one element, it's almost like an invasive species at that point, you know? You're dropping one thing with nothing like cane toads in Australia or whatever, and there's no way that the ecosystem has to cope with it. They explode and they crash, 
and then it's over. It was never brought into balance. Whereas elk are meant to live alongside wolves. Like if you hear about, for example, Yellowstone had all the elk and they're fat and lazy. Once the wolves moved back in, the elks were healthier. You know what I'm saying? Now, mm-hmm. trophy hunting doesn't necessarily help. You just made anything. a horrible argument for humans and their existence on this planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're, we're spiking pretty hard right now. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But like, you know, the way that humans do it is very different than a lot of natural predators because we've gotten too good at that. Because, you know, the wolves are going to catch the slow, sick, weak one, whatever, and we're taking the big, healthy trophy. Yeah, of course. Block, I mean, we, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily help managing it, manage it either. But, um, all right, how are we, how are we wrapping this doomsday podcast? <laughs> yeah, it got really yeah. negative. <laughs> I say it's your fault, Pastor. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, humans don't, you know, not only don't need meat to survive, but yeah. it's also healthier if they don't. I know? agree. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it, you know, v- vegetarians, you know, on average live longer than, you know, carnivores. And, and they also, you know, it's been proven they don't need like the, the medications and things like that and stuff, you know. So yeah. if you can live a longer, healthier life. Well, I'll say, I'll say this too. When I did start doing the, you know, quote unquote vegan thing, I was like, wow, I'm going to have to hunt a lot more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Keep that freezer full of meat or whatever. And here I am, like I've, we've been doing, I think Ashley said it's almost four years and I'm a hundred in three years. So like the, the funny thing is when you, when you get onto a good diet and you like learn how to do it, you feel great. Uh, you know, the yeah. food is off. Like we all ate the, the vegan burrito Vegan bowl. Yeah, the yeah, vegan bowl, bowl. At, the, mm-hmm. at the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, that was awesome. It was good food. If you can eat like that all the time. and Oh, know, absolutely. Yeah. With, yeah, it's way better. So I haven't even done any of that. But all I'm saying is that my personal reasons for it were more like a grand scheme kind of a thing. Yeah, And I fully control. believe you can, on the same, like take that tangent to uh, God, Jesus, I feel like you can live a really good life and be a really good person and be great for the world. Um, you know, without it but, but for me at least with with him it's just easy and i feel like if we take that whole thing and we apply it to the reptile industry everyone listening right now should go right there senator searchable as reptiles <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but you couldn't possibly have that better than that.